Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I am the Cyber Earth Guru. Thank you for watching. So this video has been many, many, many weeks in the making. So I've been working on this project, which kind of fuses uh, the 3D printing, 3D design, and electronics all into one big package. Um, and I had the opportunity to finally build it all, put it together, assemble it, and then give it to the intended recipient not so long ago. And so this video is gonna walk you very quickly through the process that I followed show you the design, show you all the parts, show you some of the power of these integrated tools that we're using these days that are that are just making you know this kind of uh, prototyping, uh, bringing designs to life so much easier. And so I hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to cut over to th uh, th uh, Fusion 360 here and show you what I what I designed. Uh, I'm not going to go into the backstory of uh, of what it is and, and why it matters. Uh, maybe I'll do that at the end. We'll see. But I'm going to cut over to Fusion 360 and show you the design and then uh, link a couple other videos in the process. So let's stand by. Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360. I pulled up the design. I've intentionally hidden the parts. So I want to do the reveal real quick. So uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to go into the really the back channel of this particular design. But uh, what it is, is it is a, it is a uh, Pentagon type structure with a, a, a thing in the middle that kind of spins with a nice base. So I'm gonna turn on the parts here, kind of show it to you one by one. The Pentagon, here's the base, and then what is known as the trash can. This is the uh, golden trash can, which is what this design is actually called. Um, so what do we have here? So we have this base here with a little uh, kind of, uh, I don't know what you want to call this, the, that's where actually everything attaches is actually the base of the base. Uh, this big pentagon here with some holes in it, this uh, trash can-ish looking thing with the pentagon logo in the middle, and then um, <clears throat> if I rotate it around to the back, get some mounting holes and a, a power switch, uh, two switches to activate the electronic features, and then this potentiometer here which actually controls uh, this uh, trash can here actually spins uh, through the motor driver which I will show you in a minute and so that uh, potentiometer controls the speed in which it might spin. So let me open up some of these parts real quick and show you what we got going on. We got some bodies here. Um, let me let me hide these guys real quick. I'm just going to show you the top. So the top front and top back. I'm going to turn the back off for a minute. The, the, the front is kind of straightforward. It's just a, a pentagon that I extruded up. I put some holes in it to run the wires and whatnot. But as I rotate it around the back here, you'll see some interesting things here. So let me turn these guys off. And I'll talk about those in a minute. So what we have here, and you know what, I'll turn the front off. What we have here are some LEDs. These are essentially NeoPixels. They're strips of LEDs. Uh, that I have uh, modeled in here in Fusion 360 by pulling the models in from GradCab. And and then I arranged them according to, uh, I, I literally I pulled them into this design here, if I hit back, I straighten that guy out. And I just placed them uh, one by one kind of in here and lined them up to the holes that are on the front here so that they will shine through when they are on. And then I ended up creating these, uh, what I'm calling these holders uh, that actually press fit into the edges here and hold those LEDs down against the front. Um, so these LEDs have an adhesive back, but uh, they're facing forward, so there's nothing to stick them to. And as you can see, this part is kind of thick, uh, so there's nothing really to stick them to. Too. So what I did is I actually used the glue to attach them to these additional 3D printed parts here and I'll turn it off and kind of just, uh, let's see if I turn the LEDs off, here we go. I'll just show you the part here. It's just a little track with these wings uh, that fit inside the part. So there's, there's not a whole lot of magic here, but you know, it was very useful from my perspective. And then I created, I actually just duplicated the one part and and duplicated it five times across the shell of the Pentagon here. Now, for the actual Pentagon itself, uh, it's again fairly straightforward. I just extruded it straight up. This hole here, which I'll explain in a minute, and then the little holes for the LEDs, those are all pretty straightforward. I added these, again, these little, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, the wings, call outs uh, for holes. And so if I were to turn on the back here, you can see the back just attaches right there and then you can screw some three millimeter oh, it turns out four millimeter holes uh, screws into these holes and they're chamfered so that they they sit flush in the final product so that's the top 
Uh, I don't want to spend too much time describing this necessarily. Here is the bottom. The bottom is where all the magic happens. Um, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna hide. Let's see. I'm gonna hide. Oops. Pentagon base body. I'm going to hide the top and show you the magic here. Looky there. Wow. <laughs> uh, lots of stuff going on here in the bottom. And so uh, I, I, I made a video recently about taking printed circuit board designs and pulling them to fusion and then modeling around them. And I actually showed a, a, a small piece of this overall design. So I will link to that video up there uh, and, and, and you guys can see what I did to model all of this or how I pulled it in from Fusion. But what you can see here is I have this uh, this part here, which is the microcontroller. This part here is actually a battery charger. This is the battery itself. Uh, pulled that in, got that from Grad, um, GrabCAD. Uh, a motor that drives the trash can here, uh, and then the actual motor, motor driver. And so these leads right here actually connect into this little motor driver. And then the switches here, I've got uh, most of these parts from GrabCAD actually, which is an amazing resource if you haven't used it. Uh, this toggle switch, two button switches, and then a potentiometer here. It took me a while to find the right parts, but nevertheless, it allowed me to model this part pretty straightforward. And then let me let me turn the top on, turn the bottom off, and, and kind of scroll up here and show you what we got going on. Uh, so I put a little like ledge here that I, I, I stuck the battery in. And then that kind of pushed the battery to the top and, and just create a little extra space here in the bottom. So there's not a whole lot of magic there. It did take me quite some time to figure all this out and, and whatnot. And then the last part here is uh, the, mis the the trash can itself. Let me turn off the can. I will turn on the thing here. What do we have here? We have, uh, this is the golden trash can and with a pole that runs down into the motor here. And I will turn off Let's turn off the top. And what do you have here? So you have this pole that leads down into the, the let me turn the pole off. I'll turn the pole off. It's got this little um, a shank uh, shaft here for the motor and the pole actually attaches to the motor and then that goes up and leads into the can. And then the can, uh, you know, is just, uh, will spin when the motor gets turned on. So this is the power, one of the many, many, many powers of Fusion. Uh, you can model these in place and, and do this very rapidly. You can see here on the timeline, it, it's not an, it was not an insignificant endeavor. You can see all the different movements and parts and, and whatnot, um, but it, it all came together in the end. And so let me go ahead and let's see. We will turn the base back on. We're going to turn the Pentagon on. And there you have it. You have the golden trash can um, in Fusion 360. So, okay, so that was the model in Fusion 360. And now I am going to cut over and show you some pictures of the finished product. I ended up printing uh, pretty much all of the parts in uh, the Maker Geeks PLA Crystal Series Translucent Purple, which uh, turned out to not be terribly translucent, but it worked perfectly because the purple is a, a nice, deep, um, rich sort of purple uh, color. And then the trash can, because it is a golden trash can, I actually printed it in something, uh, the, the Poly Alchemy Summer Haze, which is this Elixir series, which is this amazing sort of goldish golden um, color that just turned out uh, just it turned out fantastic if you're not familiar with the poly alchemy um, series with the elixir series with the green and the, the they've got uh, kind of a steel gray and a, this this yellow and a variety of other colors it, it is fantastic and amazing and you'll see that when we cut over the picture so let's just go ahead and get to it Okay, so this first picture shows you a picture of the the Pentagon top. Uh, I kind of zoomed in a little bit to show you. I've already installed the LEDs and whatnot. You can see um, how I printed the LED holders here, and then the Pentagon. I this is a three perimeters, uh, uh, three top, three bottom, that kind of stuff. Kind of standard print. I, it was printed, I think, at 0.2 millimeters. It might have been 0.3 given the size. I printed it in my CR10. You can see the, the lovely glass-like finish from the glass bed of the CR10 here. Okay, so here is a picture of the base itself. It's it's just a kind of a flat thing with the walls to hold electronic parts. I had to take actually a a, a bit um, to. Uh, 
open up the chamfers a little bit for the for the holes. Uh, but other than that, it printed very very well, and you can see the motor holder, motor motor holder there um, with the motor in the background. And I just super glued everything together. A next picture is just a kind of a, a jumbled picture of the all the electronic parts all wired together with the battery and the motor. I have the motor press fitted into place there, and then the switches and whatnot are just kind of kind of randomly strewn across there. Uh, you know, obviously I used uh, some heat shrink tubing to protect everything, and then um, uh, wired it all up and soldered it all up. The next picture shows all the parts in place, and I've taped everything down with just masking tape to hold it kind of uh, out of the way for lack of a better thing. I put the Arduino uh, board, the itsy bitsy board in and then taped in the motor controller into place and then put the battery into place. There's a little bit of gap in the battery between where the holder was and whatnot because I wasn't entirely sure what the thickness of the battery was because I actually modeled it before I got the battery in the mail and so I didn't bother to go back and move it. But so I just, you know, kind of uh, rolled up a little piece of tape in there and stung it in there, not a big deal. And then the, the switches are all installed in place there. The next picture is the kind of reveal, if you will, of the final product. Uh, you can see it all put together here. Uh, the golden trash can there you can see in the background is the, the first one I made. wasn't quite um, thick enough and big enough, wasn't rigid enough, so I created a second one here. Uh, but you can see how the purple, the, that lovely, uh, rich purple color, the glass finish from the CR-10 is amazing. And um, th that kind of a summer haze, that elixir color, it just it looks like gold. It is amazing. So highly recommend both of these filaments. Um, I am going to cut over to a 360 view of this so you can see it kind of live fire. So let's stand by. Okay, so there was the project. I hoped you like it. I think it turned out amazing. Um, I the, the person I gave it to loved it. He thought it was amazing. He's an engineer by heart. He was fascinated by the fact that it lit up, um, that it uh, that it that it spun, and uh, more importantly, uh, he and I both agreed that when you turn the motor up too far, it actually hit a resonance frequency and the whole thing shook. Damn near came apart. Um, and so we are both fascinated by you know what the resonance frequency was. If you're interested in that, I don't have any video of it, um, but uh, maybe we can cajole him into uh, shooting some video. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. 
but that is the project. I think it turned out just amazing in the end, and I am super proud of it. It took many weeks of design, uh, many, many, many days of printing and you know tweaking things and getting it right and then you know about a day or so of uh, soldering and assembly and whatnot so but it all worked out in the end and i think it turned out very well and and that's 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 really great so hey uh you know if you like this video give it a thumbs up as always if you don't like the video i, I just appreciate a thumbs up anyway you know i think this one this one deserves a thumbs up whether you liked it or not <laughs> um so as always, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Very important these days. Ring the bell. It's uh, if you want to be notified of new content. That's important. And uh, as always, be inspired. Have a great night, everyone.